But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've this had book phone books that are in there. I certainly don't think books. God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Today our topic is very important. I hope people will take notes for what we will teach you. And uh, we will open Skype immediately in case there is a Muhammadan would like to join us. Uh, you know, we welcome always Muhammadans from all kind of uh, Muhammadanism, uh, Shi'anism, Sufism, Sunnism, Druzinism, all kind of Nism. All of them, they are useless anyway. And in reality, none of them knows what his religion is, you know, but they have names for it. And having names doesn't make your religion a religion, but eh, it's a title. You hide behind it or under the shade of it. So today our topic uh, about uh, uh, cutting hands. You know, all of us, we knew, and there's no question about that. Islam is a religion of mercy. Who of you don't agree? I mean, we have to agree that there is no question about that, that Islam really a religion of mercy. We saw in the news that a Muslim, he chopped the hands of a professor in India for insulting the fifth false prophet Muhammad. And because he chopped the hand of this uh, the person, uh, supposedly now Allah and his prophet are happy and uh, they feel better. <clears throat> and you know, I mentioned when uh, we spoke about this before, that Islam is always, uh, you know, when they ask a big sheikh, he's the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in the world, Al-Qaradawi, uh, they asked him about using violence. He said, if not the sword, Islam is demolished long time ago. So the whole idea of what they do is to prevent you from exposing how stupid Islam is. And then by preventing you from exposing Islam, Islam will survive. But, you know, if all of us, we insult Muhammad and we expose Muhammad, uh, then the Muslims, they will give up and they will, they will not think about such an act. However, it doesn't matter really how many people insult Muhammad, I will insult Muhammad to the last second in my life. It doesn't matter if I have hands, feet, tongue, I will insult him even in my heart if I have no time to speak. He is the most filthy scumbag, filthy criminal ever. He's a rapist, child molester, a womanizer. He go even after his own son, wife. And the Muslim, they are so proud about him. They say, if the prophet's eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the prophet can, if her, excuse my language. This is what it says. I'm just using the language. Uh, all right. Okay, receiving some messages in Skype. 
we want Muslim to text us please this guy he bought my book and he is saying he is so happy that he is using my book to expose the lies of Islam and uh, you know long story short uh, I have been using your book waking up Muslims I have one whom I have heard for three weeks running he did not seem to be knowledgeable and not sure right so you know yeah education is power you need to know that always and the Muslims actually the Mohammedan they target the one who they believe is ignorant because this is the only one uh, you know they uh, they can fool this is the only one they can deceive ignorant person you have to be an ignorant person to be a target uh, okay All right, who actually is receive a message from someone? I don't know. I don't know what is that. This person, he is a master of master. Okay. What shaman mean? I need to find out what is this. Okay. Modern version of Isin Mark is practical. Kabbalist working with medicine plant. All right, it will be a feedback from you. Will be interested. I'm glad to share what I know about what happened in this religious war. We were spot on on my thing. Maybe I can add some part <clears throat> to mosaic. All right, look like this person. He have some education. I want to share with us. <clears throat> Oh, okay, so he is saying uh, he is uh, he is a Jew. Uh huh. He's a Jew. All right. Well, maybe this is like a text message from yesterday uh, about uh, the war in Ukraine. All right. Well, until now, I didn't see any message from a Muslim. Okay. Yeah, too many messages about the topic yesterday. All right. All right, we go back to our topic. I was trying to read the, uh, those messages, messages to see if there is something really can help us in our topic today, but all of them they are yesterday, about yesterday. Uh, I will show you a story proving to you that Islam is just a, the most stupid cult. Not only it's not merciful, the Muslims they say that Allah He sent Muhammad as a mercy for mankind. This is what they say. But the second you start reading Islam, you know, and you, you, you have knowledge of it, you will notice that Islam not only a very filthy, disgusting, bloody, violent, with no mercy. You see, I'm not against, by the way, violent penalty for a crime no I'm not especially if the crime was itself was violent like somebody killed somebody I believe that the best punishment for somebody who kills somebody is to be killed not to put him in jail for it's not right that there is a human being he is now in the grave and the one who killed him is enjoying life eating and have health insurance and maybe he's watching TV because most of those Western like if you go to Norway, uh, jail is there like it's like a five stars hotels. So I kill like I go shoot a hundred people and then you put me in a room and I have internet, I have computer, I have TV. I mean, what is missing? And I eat nice food and my room is warm. Is that fair? No, this is a stupid. Point. This is not a penalty. This is loyalty. This is loyalty uh, to the to the criminals, not to the victims. Uh, <clears throat> if we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran something say something very you know very silly.
in chapter 21 verse number 107 it says that Allah he sent Muhammad nothing but the mercy for mankind nothing which means the purpose of Muhammad to be sent is to be a mercy this is what it says and I will show you let me clean the screen for you so you can see in the screen with me give me a second so based on this Muhammad is nothing but mercy to all mankind and even jinn I don't know what Muhammad have to do with the jinn look like he's in control of them too but all of us we knew that Muslim they claim that Muhammad was controlled by black magic which means he was controlled by Satan which means he was controlled by a genie because the Muslim believe that Satan is a Muslim and he's a genie as you know in the Quran uh, the Quran confirm that Satan he believe in Allah and he's a good Muslim but the only reason he not doing good because Allah he appointed him <clears throat> Which means he is just he's doing good he's doing the right job and his job is to be the enemy of mankind <clears throat> in chapter 6 verse 1 112 it says that uh, we have appointed for every prophet enemies shayateens satans who is the one who appointed the shayateen allah so allah is the boss of all shaitans in the world and he gave them uh, duty to do so like let us say uh, you know you work in a company you go to the company uh, in the morning they say to you today you have to do this and this and that this is exactly how Allah he managed his business he have many shaitans they work for him and those shaitans they have a duty to go and mislead everybody including prophets of Allah and here you notice actually the verse saying clearly in chapter 6 112 that Allah appointed to every prophet Satan's and here the the Quran says something very strange it says Satan from the mankind and jinn <clears throat> If you ask the Muslims, is Satan is a genie or he is from the mankind? He will say to you right away, uh, you know, jinn. But this verse here says mankind. And they try to give it their own, you know, uh, uh, false fiction interpretation. But the verse is so clear. It is Satan's. He used shayateen. So they are not just not like us. And between two brackets, even the Muslim, they make it clear. They say the devils from among the mankind engine. So what this verse is saying to us that shaitan, he can be a human being sent by Allah. He is, he looked like a human being, but he is shaitan. And he is a genie in the same time. But the question why Allah want to send Satan's to mislead people. You see, it's not Satan voluntarily. He is doing misleading. It is Allah, you know. In fact, the Quran confirmed that, like when Shaitan he says to Allah, أغويتني, when you mislead me, when you deceive me, so Shaitan saying to Allah, You are the one, uh, you, you know, all those verses say the same, by the way, like chapter, chapter 7, verse 16. The chapter 15 verse number 39 uh, like here as an example it says so Iblis said oh my Lord so shaitan is a Muslim shaitan he called Allah my Lord because you mislead me I shall mislead them too so who is the true shaitan obviously the true shaitan is Allah Shaitan himself in Islam is a Muslim. Allah, he mislead 
shaitan so shaitan can do the work in this part of the verse he is going to mislead people but yet shaitan is a Muslim and he believe in Allah and he worship Allah to the point supposedly in the day of judgment shaitan he would say I have nothing to do with those people who did me mislead by me but you are the you are the one who made me mislead them going back now to uh, the stories of Muhammad <clears throat> which is about uh, thieves, cutting hands, because this is our topic today. There's a video of Mufti Mink, if you remember, we played it before here. Let me find it. They brought a they brought a thief to the caliphate, and they told uh, the th the thief he told the caliphate because the Muslims, as you see, they believe that Shaitan, uh, he himself he have a destiny. Muslim themselves they have a destiny, and destiny means that everything you do, including rape, killing, theft, uh, crimes. Everything is done because Allah, he appointed you to do that. So if we go here, we will find this. This is Mufti Mink speaking. The one who is trying to call me, I will call you back. Give me, give me a few minutes. So this is Mufti Mink. Explain to us a story for a man, his hand should be cut off for he is a thief. Listen carefully. Be the fool. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, according to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he had he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, O oh Umar, O oh Amir al Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one. So you, what he said? He said, this is a good argument if you want to look at it. He didn't say this is foolishness. This is a good argument. Why you are going to punish me if what I did is a destiny? The so-called sheikh, Mink, he agreed. He said, this is a good argument. But look how the response of the caliphate, because Islam is devilish. It's about playing games. He could not refute the argument of the man, which is proving Islam to be invalid, stupid cult. Why I will be punished for being a thief if this is was destiny? And as you see, it's a good argument, which means he's right. His argument is a right argument. It's a very good argument. The caliphate could not refute him. What he said, listen carefully. O oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined my deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Oh, look at this intelligence. See how smart the caliphate? You see the game of, of, of sickness? So now he will cut the hands of the person even though he knew the argument is right. If it is destiny, which means I cannot change it, Allah, he made me a thief. Why you are punishing me? The caliphate, he said, well, Allah, he destined me to cut your hands. And then we need to ask ourselves, what kind of God he deceived Shaitan? Shaitan deceived people. People believe it is destiny. 
which means they have no choice to do or not to do. And then they will be punished. And the one who punish you, it's a destiny too that he will punish you. So the one who killed, it's a destiny. The one who was killed is a destiny. The one who punished, punished the killer, it was a destiny. This is how stupid this garbage cult is. Let us see the one who is trying to call. Uh, yeah, focus with me, focus with me, guys, with the topic. Those who they are texting me in Skype, we have a topic. Yeah, we will answer those questions after we finish this topic. Let's see. Somebody tried to call me. I will mute uh, the speaker until until they answer. <laughs> I'm calling the person. Hello? It says connection is weak. Okay. Call later. All right. Let us call one more time. <laughs> Yes, uh, you are live on air. Hello? I hear you. Go ahead. You are live on air. Uh, yeah, hello? Do you hear me? Yeah, do you hear me? All right, you are live on air. Go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Uh, not sure if you can hear me properly. I hear you very fine. No worry. Okay, great. Uh, good evening. Um, I know it's a bit off topic. Uh, uh, and if you don't mind, uh, uh, could I ask some questions that I um, I have a bit since a bit since a while? All right. Yeah. Um, Sorry. No problem. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm waiting for you. So, I'm... Um, sorry, just a sec. I've been um, uh, listening to you and uh, trying to you and other people out there um, for a while and uh, I have a couple of questions regarding I mean if, if, if I'm calling clearly I have my doubts all right <laughs> but I have some a couple of questions so you, so you are a, you are a Muslim uh, I was born and raised in a Muslim family all right. Yeah. Don't be nervous. Um, relax. Don't be nervous. You know, we, I'm here to help you. There's no need to be nervous. Uh, relax. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I just um, I'd like to understand, for instance, uh, if uh, you know, for some crazy reason, it's a cult or it's you know whatever your um, you you might define it um, there are some things for instance growing up my my, my parents uh, well I guess as the majority of uh, people they were taught about uh, this religion because 
uh, from what they were taught from their parents. And I mean, at least from my side, my parents, before moving to Europe, uh, they didn't study, they weren't scholarized. So they believe what they would taught they they were taught and um and I was taught so from them I didn't had a bit the opportunity to you know go to a Arab school even though I'm Arab I understand a bit but not much or to study in Islam in in an Arab country so what I know it's what I was told and I I have those uh, points that I, my mom, she would always, um, you know, remind me of how uh, miraculous is uh, the book by stating, for instance, um, topics related to embryology. Um, um, I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Uh, I really, uh, I studied economics. I didn't study at all the science, but uh, those are things that, for instance, out of curiosity, you know, I wanted to check up. And I, uh, listening to you a couple of times, I know people already made this point. Um, so I went through it and um, you um, pointed out that uh, in the verse, um, you know, Quran 22.5, there is the point where it says clinging cloth. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I understand that uh, this can be both uh, coagulated blood Mm -hmm. Uh, when you look at the Oxford Dictionary. Mm -hmm. But it also says material stuck together or of material stuck together. And that kind of tells me, well, maybe this is what is meant. Okay. All right. So uh, can I call you a sister, even though you are not a Christian? Is that okay? Of course, it's okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, you know, uh, Oxford Dictionary is not really an Arabic dictionary. This is, you know, this is what the Western learn mm -hmm. from the Arab. The Arab told them, and who is the Arab? The Muslims who defend in Islam. But all of us, we knew that the word uh, alaqa <coughs> is a dead blood. And this is why even the Muslim, they say, uh, they say that in their translation, which usually Muslims don't say because Muslims, they try uh, to hide it. As long as you said your parents are Arab, alaqa is simply the one with the say where I say alaqa. It is it is a blood when you injured. Let us say you have injury in your uh, foot or your leg or your hand or anywhere. Then after some time you will have a blood covering the the injury. Correct. Yeah. And that is good to be there because that will stop the bleeding until the skin is healed and then that thing will fill up fill down. Correct. Yeah. That is the alaqa. <clears throat> Same time, let us say for the sake of argument, uh, this is not what uh, the Quran meant. Let us say it was saying something stuck together, but there's nothing in the baby made <laughs> of something stuck together. Because as you see, it says we made the sperm, the sperm, mm -hmm. because this is a, this is appeared in the Quran many times, not only in chapter 22, verse number uh, 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 14, uh, this is mentioned many times uh, about the Nutfa and how the Nutfa, uh, like the same uh, chapter 23, verse number 14, it's a shorter version of the same verse. It says, we made the Nutfa into a clot. Okay. So what is the Nutfa? It is a semen, mm -hmm. correct? Um, uh, the, the translation here, it says semen. Semen. But semen is the semen mm -hmm. of the man, correct? Yeah. Okay. But the semen of the man never transformed to anything like that. Uh, I am assuming that you went to school, right? Yeah. All right. So when we go to school, what we learn that the, the semen go uh, to the women egg and do the fertilizing. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So 
is the semen become something or the semen just fertilize and deliver the DNA and then the egg is going to grow? It is the egg. Yeah. There is no egg here. So this is number one mistake. And here it says that the semen become a clot, not the semen made a clot. No, the semen become a clot. And then the clot become a lump. And then the lump become a flesh. So all of those, they were what? Semen. So based on the Quran, the semen is the one who become a baby. And this is absolutely very false. In the top of that, you know, who knows what the Quran is saying better than Muhammad? What do you think? Your mom, yeah. me, or Muhammad? For sure Muhammad, right? Yeah. So if we go now to what Muhammad said, we will find this. Let us go to what Muhammad said. You can see my screen or you cannot? Uh, I believe it's... I see the picture of uh, Mufti Mank. Oh, okay, it's going to refresh for you. Okay. So if we go to the Hadith, trying to understand uh, what Muhammad is talking about. We will find Muhammad give us details, and those details will clear everything, every doubt, about what uh, what's happening. Read with me. I don't know if you can see the screen now. Um, one second. There is um, not going on. All right. I will read until you... Uh, let me know when you see it. I will read okay. it for you. Okay. Um, when when yeah, the drop okay. of semen remains in the womb for 40 or 45 nights. You know, you can go right now and search on Google, you will find that semen cannot even live more than five days inside the women. And the semen does not mm -hmm. go to the womb. Semen don't go to the womb. You know? Yeah. And it says here that semen is the one remain in the womb for 40 days or, or 45 nights. The angels and come, in fact, your translation is false because the, art, the angel, he come to the semen. So he's standing now in front of the semen inside the, the womb and he asks Allah, is bad or good? So here we see the first mistake Muhammad making that semen, according to him, taught by Allah, stay inside the womb for 40 to 50 days, to 45 days or night, uh, inside the womb. And that is obviously something Muhammad received from his God, because Muhammad, he is not speaking from his own. As, as you know, Muslim, they claim that Muhammad, he is a person who do not know how to write, how to read, right? And he's yeah. talking now about God, the creation. So everything he here, you know, he's talking about angel and what angels say. So, uh, if you read this, this is Sahih Muslim. Allah the Exalted, and I can give you the link if you want, uh, so you can have reference to. You can show it to your mom. Let me give it to you in the in the chat. I just gave you the link. You can open it from your side. So Allah the Exalted, the Glorious, has appointed an angel as the uh, caretaker of the womb. And he would say, my Lord, I, uh, it, it, is an, uh, it is now a drop of semen. Oh, my Lord, it is a clot of blood. Do you see it? Yeah. Who's talking? Uh, Muhammad. Yeah. Okay. Was Muhammad wrong? If Muhammad was wrong, then Muhammad is not a prophet. Either Muhammad is fabricating something, claiming that he learned from Allah, or this is the truth. And then he says here, so now it become a, a clot, blood clot. Oh my Lord, now it become a lump. Now it became a flesh of a flesh. And then when Allah decided he gave the final shape, the angels say, oh my Lord, would it be a male or a female? Which is false, because the gender happened in a very early stage for the baby, not at, and not the last thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So everything is wrong. And is it me who is explaining the Quran now, or, or this is Muhammad? Muhammad? So it can't be true, correct? What do you think? Mm -hmm. And this is Sahih. This is very authentic. They can't say to you, this is weak, this is uh, daif, you know. This is Muhammad himself speaking. And this is his explanation. Um, 
and if the explanation of Muhammad is wrong, well then, who is the one who can explain the Quran? And how Muhammad is in the Prophet then? So we showed you what the Quran is saying, and we showed you what Muhammad is saying. So now Muhammad is confirming what is in the Quran. So what do you think, uh, my sister? Do you think Muhammad really is still a prophet? No, I um, you have been listening to you for quite a long and <laughs> I'm here to help you and I, I understand that you are struggling uh, and I'm just being very honest with you about what's you know I, I, I'm not saying anything I, it's in the front of you on the screen this is their this is a Muslim website this is not even my translation so how any, any Muslim can deny that you know and I understand your struggle because you grew up in a Muslim family and your parents, they told you how amazing. Look, give me give me something else your mom, she told you about the miraculous thing in the Quran. There's something else? Um, something about the... Sorry, no. More. It's okay, it's okay, I understand. I uh, had you are like my little sister, consider, consider, consider me your other brother. And I'm here, I will have all the time for you until even if we, if we speak for four hours, don't worry. Take your time. Something about the, the, the depth of uh, somewhere in the sea. Where, where? Uh, it's about what? Something about the deepest point in the sea or... Oh, okay, this one, okay. You know, I, I want to teach you something, all right? I want to teach you how to, to to understand anything you read, not only the Quran. And you gave me this example now about the deep sea. Hmm. I noticed that all people, not only, I mean, you or your mom, and everybody, when they read, they don't really focus, uh, you know, uh, in, in the reading carefully. They don't even read. I don't know. I mean, we, there is there is a there is a there is a reading and there is a person who is let us say uh, understanding so when they speak about uh, uh, you know about the waves and the ocean and how the Quran knew that uh, uh, you know uh, how the Quran knew this a long time ago you will find in two seconds that this is this is absolutely a mistake and the Quran doesn't say that if we go here let us see <clears throat> and the verse you are talking about about I to confirm this is a chapter 24 verse number 40 correct it says uh, you know, the state of uh, disbeliever is like the darkness in a wet deep sea, overwhelmed with the great waves, topped by a great waves, topped by dark clouds, darkness on above each other. Is that the one, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is the only one in the Quran speaking about the darkness in the sea. It was something about the Romans, and they. Oh, but this is a different one. But you mentioned to me a second. This is uh, you mentioned about the. I thought you mentioned about the dark, the dark sea. The deepest uh, point of on earth. Ah, uh, 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 that is the other one. Okay, let me explain this one, and we will go to that one. All right. Yes. Here you see the Muslim. They claim here how the Quran knew that the ocean is down deep. The, the fact there is nowhere it's mentioned that it says that. Uh, there is a crazy uh, 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 waves going one after one and there's dark cloud and that's why the water is dark so this is not about the sea itself this is about this why it's called what what the cloud have to do with the deep sea 
like if we have a cloud that will make the sea deep sea will will make it dark no so this is a false interpretation they give it to you now we go to the lowest uh, uh, point in the earth <clears throat> Uh, let us see here. In chapter 30, it says, uh, verse number two, the Roman has been defeated in the nearer mm -hmm. land, okay? And they will be defeated and will be victorious. Uh, okay. Uh, let us see here. Okay. You see the translation here? It says, Adnal Ard is not about the lowest land. It's about the land is near. So the Roman now, they are fighting in Jerusalem. Uh, nearer. Not yeah, deepest. it's not deepest. However, if even if we say that this is false, because the Roman they did not have their war in the you know in the Dead Sea, they were having their war in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is way higher than the sea. It's not down the sea. So in the nearer sea, you can go right now and check what the Roman battles they have and which one. Why 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 the kuffar they are making fun of Muhammad? Because Muhammad, he claimed now at this point that he is a, his, he, he, he believed that the Christians are from his religion too, which is false because we don't worship Allah and he's a pagan. Suddenly he is a proud about the Roman. I thought the Roman, the Muslim, they go and they vote them and they fought them and they, you know, because they are kuffar. But here there's a contradiction. Here the Roman, Allah himself, don't worry, the Roman will be victorious. And then it says that the one, they will be victorious and then the believers will be uh, happy. Okay, who is the believers then? Why the why the believers would? And here you see, this is the Roman against the Persian, correct? Yeah. Number one, this is a false victory because the Roman they did not become victorious until many years after. Because if this has happened in the time of Badr, as Muslims uh, they say, it took long, it took the Roman many years after to finish the war with the Persian. Plus. It says here, within three to nine years. If we go in the Hadith, we will find this. That this verse revealed to Muhammad after the Roman become victorious. It says Abu Sa'id narrated that on the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. So the believer were pleased with that. And then the following was revealed. The Muslim, they say this is a prophecy of Prophet Muhammad that the Roman will be victorious after a few years. But as you see, the prophecy happened after the victory happened. How that can be? Imagine I say to you, tomorrow you will pass the exam, but you passed the exam a week ago. <laughs> you know? So there's many mistakes here in the verse, and they lie when they speak about the, the lowest part of the earth. But as long as you are speaking about Muhammad uh, prophesying. Well, here we go. Muhammad, he prophesied that the Roman, before the day of judgment, they will become the majority of mankind. Mm -hmm. If you go right now and search on Google, uh, you will find that the Roman number is shrinking fast, which means the Italian. And Italy now, they are... You live in Italy? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, uh, you know then that the number of population in Italy is declining very bad, very bad, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, how Muhammad here, he say that the judgment day will come and the Roman are the majority of mankind. Do you see the reference? Mm -hmm. Is the Roman is the majority? <laughs> The Roman, they are not even in the size of, of, a, of a city in China. How they are the majority. So this is a false prophecy about the Roman. The smart Muhammadan, they try to say to you, oh, this is, he meant the Christians, but the Christians are not the Roman. That you know what? Okay, uh, there is, there is uh, the Coptic, there is African, there is, I mean, what Roman? 
there is Indian, there is a Christian, Christianity spread everywhere since the beginning of the time. In fact, there is many Christians, they become Christians before the Roman even, as you know, that the Roman as an empire become a Christian 300 years after Jesus. So 300 years before the Roman become a Christian, there is many people from any, many uh, ethnic groups, like the Ethiopian, like the Indian, like Syrian, like, like, like all of those, they become Christians already, and they have nothing to do with the Roman. So how the Roman, they will come, so this is cannot be what they're saying, that the Roman mean the Christians. The Roman is the Roman. The Quran called the Christians Nasara. Muhammad do not need to use the word Roman. He can say the Nasara. He did not say that. He said Roman. So this is another false prophecy of Muhammad. And that to prove that Muhammad cannot be a prophet. You mentioned to me too about the, uh, the semen, about the sperm, right? Well, in the Quran, chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7, Muhammad, he claimed that women, they have semen. Do you believe that women have semen? Okay, how Muhammad, uh, I don't know if I can only call him now Muhammad or Dr. Muhammad. How Dr. Muhammad now, he discovered that women have semen. This is Ibn Kathir. I will put it on the screen. And this is not my interpretation. So Muslim will not say to you, Christian Prince is lying to you. It doesn't say that. It doesn't mean that. So this is Ibn Kathir. Here he says, uh, let, So let the man see from what he is created. This is alerting man on weakness of his origin, which was created. Then he continues saying, خُلِقَ مِنْ مَاءٍ دافق. He is created from water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that come bursting forth from the man and the woman. So there is a water come out of the women, not stay inside the women, and there is a water come out of the man, not stay inside the man, bursting forth, and that thus the child is produced from both of them. Wonderful. So Muhammad, uh, so the Quran claimed that the women she produce water, the man he produce water, and the water is what make babies. Let us see what what that what does that mean? More details, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which referring to her chest. And here they are giving you a hadith from Muhammad. He says, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women are it is the fluid yellow and fine in texture, and the child will not be born except from both of them, i.e. their sexual fluid. What do you think, my sister? Is that what God really inform us? Did you learn in school that women have a semen? It's obvious, right? It's obvious that this is false. Women don't have semen. Muhammad is being foolish. He thought that the women, the liquid, the women she have in her private part during sexual intercourse, and in a funny way he described it as yellow, which means the women he Muhammad he been with, they have a sexual disease, because why it's why it's yellow? They, they, they will it's going to be yellow only if they have certain STD disease. So Muhammad, he think that women, sexual fluid, which is yellow, and man, which is sexual fluid, which is white, is the reason to make a baby. When they mix together, we have a baby. And actually we find that in the hadith, here we go, Muhammad, he mentioned that. If we go to the hadith, we will find it in details. A woman, she came to Muhammad, she asked him that she saw a wet dream. Obviously, she is masturbating. Excuse my language. So, uh, so she told Muhammad if she need to wash her private part. So Muhammad, he said, well, if you see a liquid there, you have to wash it. Uh, the wife of Muhammad, she was listening. And she said to Muhammad, 
Does women even have this charge? Which means the wives of Muhammad never have orgasm. Otherwise, why the wife of Muhammad? She is so surprised to hear that this woman, she have this charge. And now Muhammad is telling her that she have to wash it. But Muhammad, he claimed now in this hadith, this is why we are mentioning it, that the women discharge is how the baby is made. What Muhammad, he said after his wife, Umm Salama said, Umm Salama smiled, she said, does a woman get discharged? Allah Apostle said, then why does the child resemble the mother? <laughs> what does have to do with resembling the, the mother, you know? The, the women have this charge that how the baby is made. The discharge is the water coming out. This is not the egg. It's a water. In other hadith, Muhammad, he explained it even more. He make it clear that this is about water. Here it says, if she see the water, you see in Arabic, you said that you are from an Arab family. It says here, إِذَا رَأَتِ الْمَا Do you see the word ma? إِذَا رَأَتِ الْمَا If she saw the water, so you don't see something is inside the body, right? You see what is outside the body, correct? Mm -hmm. So, إِذَا رَأَتِ الْمَا If she saw the women, then this is the discharge, and then she have to wash it. And then Umm Salama, she said, well, do the women even have really the discharge? Muhammad, he says, okay, how the, uh, you know, he's saying his wife, you are silly, stupid, you know? Don't you know? So then how the baby resemble his uh, parents or the mother, you know? What do you think? This is a, a prophet. This is Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad, showing a big failure and ignorance in what he is talking about, yet he claim that he received his knowledge from God. But this is cannot be from God. This is a man making things up. The discharge of the women have nothing to do how the baby look like. As you see, Umm Salama, she never had this charge, the wife of Muhammad. She never had it. So if a woman, she never have this charge, especially many Muslim women, they do circumcision for them, which means they will never have orgasm. That means the baby, they cannot, the women didn't, cannot have a baby. Because women, they don't have this charge. They never have orgasm. What do you think? If you have more evidence, you can give it to me and I will show you that all of them, they are, they are, all the evidence Muslims they have that Muhammad is a prophet, they do the opposite. They prove Muhammad to be false. And I, I say to you, in a friendly challenge, I don't want to use the word challenge because I see that you are nervous already, but let us say in a very friendly ch challenge, my sister, if you can show me one thing, Muhammad, he said is not stupid. Just one thing. We have the whole Quran. If we can find one thing Muhammad did not say, is you know, like, you know, uh, uh, the Quran says that we have to be nice to our parents, but this is what, and this is in the Bible. So what? I mean, everybody know that you should be nice to your, actually in the Bible it says if you, if you, uh, you know, if you harm your parents, if you insult them, the punishment is death. In the Quran, there's no penalty. In the, in the, uh, in the sect of uh, 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 Hanifa, if a man have a sexual intercourse with his mother, there is no penalty. I can show it to you right now. What kind of religion this religion is? Ah, we mention this. In the Quran it says in chapter 25, verse number 54, We go to the interpretation, it says, if a man have sexual intercourse with his own daughter, there is no penalty. What kind of religion says that you can have sex with your daughter? Is that from God? You can right now go, open by your own, and show it to your mom, and as long as your mom, she know Arabic, well, here we go. Chapter 25, verse number 54, read it in Arabic, Al-Qurtubi. It's not forbidden. 
to have sexual intercourse with his daughter or she is his daughter from adultery and her mother so now he can have sex with both and there's no penalty and what the what al qurtubi he says there that this is according to the most accurate opinion of islam which means the majority of the muslims in the world agree that having sex with your child as long as she is not from marriage is lawful it's forbidden for you to have sex with your child from your marriage because then it's she is your daughter but if she is a daughter from adultery well in islam she is not your daughter so you can have sex with the daughter and, and the mother how but that can be from god why are aren't those things out and known because i, I understand my my parents that you know they 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 didn't know better they they learned to read and write when they came in europe and so i understand the ignorance that it's it was there but nowadays it's nowadays we have everything and we we have the translations and we have uh, <laughs> why people are still holding on Islam? Well, people, you know, uh, many, they don't want to see because the truth will hurt. And they, uh, you know, they block it from their mind because if somebody says, oh, I don't want to, don't, don't listen to those people, you know. And actually, Muhammad, he encouraged the Muslims uh, that if people, they start accusing Islam of things, what do you do? You leave where they are sitting and talking. Muhammad don't want people to know uh, uh, what what people say about this religion, and he forbid them from sitting with those people, so they will not listen and they will not see how Islam is silly and stupid. However, anyone who seek to study and learn, uh, he can find it easy, you know. Yeah, all of all of those, you know, uh, in, in the Quran. Uh, tons of verses. I can show you verses from now until tomorrow. And by the way, I send you the link of Al Qurtubi in the chat, and sorry, in Skype, so you can uh, show it to your parents how the Quran approve having sex with the daughter, if she is a daughter from adultery. Remember, the Quran says it's forbidden for you, your mother and your daughters. Wonderful, but if she is a daughter from adultery, no. How that can be from God? No. What about the man beating the wife? What did you ask your mom about that? No, but I asked her about. Uh, I tried to ask her about uh, uh, Muhammad and Aisha, Aisha or mm -hmm. the the girl, Aisha or Khadija. I don't know. The six years old. You mean? I mean it's nine. No, no, she was or six. six. No, she was six. I mean, I mean, there is no difference anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, 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 six is is uh, is just a little baby. I mean, nine. I can lay, say, okay, maybe you know, maybe maybe she was no. giving fertilizer and she is eating vitamin every day. And there is no. And um, I asked her about. I asked my mom about that and. Uh, she told me that I'm, I'm, I feel sorry because God bless my mom, but she told me that back then the years they were counted in a different way, so she was older and, and I believed this story until I started, um, yeah, my mom, she told me that when she was six years old, she was 10 meters tall at that time. And she was able to carry my dad with one finger at that time. But now she cannot. But at that time, my mom, she was really big. And uh, my dad, he, she carried him and uh, with one finger, you know. Yeah, women at that time, they used to be different <laughs> at that time. <laughs> but... Uh, I mean, the girl, she is, look what the hadith says here. 
and you can share this with your mom. I will give you to you the link. Aisha, she said that my mom, she wanted to send me to the prophet, which means the prophet when I sleep with her, the man he can't wait. But because I'm too small, what her mom she was doing, she wanted to increase her weight. So she say, and we read, my mother intended to make me gain weight to send me to the house of the messenger of Allah, but nothing which desired benefit me till she gave me cucumber with the fresh dates to eat. Then I gain as much weight as